G'day, my name's Rick Dobson. I'm a passionate trout fisherman. I appreciate Victoria and Australia for the many thousands of kilometres we've got of great wild trout country. It's very important in my mind to look after these beautiful wild fish. They're great to catch, but they're great to put back and they're equally good to catch again in the future for myself and others that follow my footsteps and vice versa. So today we've outlined a few principles of correct uh, looking after this, these fish and probably also the incorrect way to look after these fish. So come with us on a little journey, including our rubber fish and the wild fish we caught previously, and see how we go. Okay, this is a really quick demonstration just on the differences between a barbed hook, which is this one here, and a debarbed hook, this one here. So first of all, to get a debarbed, a barbed hook out of the fish, they're quite difficult at times. You've got to really push and push, and you're putting a lot of pressure on the fish, or squashing the fish, pressure on the gills, it's out of the water for a long period of time. It's not a cool thing. So it's hard to get them out, but they do come out. This fly is barbless. To get a barbless fly hook out, just simply hold it and just come straight out. So they're a lot more efficient as far as that's concerned. Ironically, a barbless hook will catch more fish too. So to get a barbed hook to penetrate, particularly on smaller fish, to penetrate past the barb, that takes a lot of pressure as you can see or it just comes straight out. To get it to go past the barb, which is now, that's a lot, a lot of pressure. So I've light rods, light gear, typical small stream things. Um, it's very hard to get a barbed hook to be efficient. Uh, barbless hook, on the other hand, to be efficient, goes straight in, straight to the very potential of its bend, so it won't come out. That's a bit of a fallacy, I think. Uh, but it can come out very quickly and very simply. So barbless hooks are a great thing whether you squash your own barbs or indeed buy barbless hooks, that's up to you guys. Okay, we've got to our river. We're about to proceed with our lure, bait, or indeed fly. Um, it's best to follow the whole procedure through and debarb these hooks. So to debarb hooks, you need a tool such as this, which is a great little tool. It's got um, a pair of gripping portion sections there. It's got a serrated scissor in that portion there, but most importantly, it's got a flat to flat surface area there. That flat to flat surface area lets us do many things effectively. We can put a fly in there, or hook in there, on the barb, and it'll always kick a bit left or a bit right. This one kicked left. Under pressure now, minimal pressure, we roll the hook back and forwards. So we roll the barb down. We don't endeavor to squash the barb because this won't work but rolling the barb down ensures that it will go in easily and also come out easily of fish or indeed my face for argument's sake. Um, ironically, you'll catch more fish with debarbed hooks. Debar hooks that aren't debarbed have got a lot more surface area to try and penetrate, particularly through smaller fish. So that's our debarbed fly we're about to put on shortly. The other benefit of this particular tool, is you can grab a blackberry, if that was a blackberry, and your fly is caught there, you can cut the blackberry and you can pull the, pull the hook out. So if you're walking through a, through a bush or get caught up there somewhere, you can reach way up there somewhere, pull the blackberry or bush down, cut it off and then just relax and then just undo your hook or fly if you're unfortunate enough like me to catch it all the bloody time. only quite small. They really are kings of this little stream and environments like this. Whether you target these fish with fly, lures or bait, they deserve the same respect. Be relative to size. That fly has come out of the fish's mouth now because it was debarbed. That fish is in beautiful condition. My wet hands are really quite cool now. I'll now release the fish gently into the current and Watch him with a little pick out of the water. One, two, three, four. Back in the water and let him go. Thank you, sailor. I'll see you next time. Off he goes down there. 
unharmed. So we're back to our test case fish. Um, I still think with a rubberized mesh net such as this, it's incredibly fine mesh. It does look after our fish as best we can. Um, it's a great tool. Studies have shown that this mesh is the best mesh by a long shot because it's got small um, apertures, if you will, um, and the heads won't go through, tails won't protrude through, so we don't split fins, we don't choke fish, etc. So these are really, really good. They can be retrofitted to any net you've already existingly owned. So it's, and they're not a dear thing to look after our resource. So I think with a tools are great, but I do think with barbless hooks, which ironically will catch more fish, our, our thumb and forefinger just used appropriately on the fly. Just roll, roll the fly out, let the fish go, support the fish obviously, and all the right things there. But the thumb and forefinger are a pretty good tool. Right, so now push it to the fly, over the fly, and push it backwards, and out it comes. That fish is now free to be released. If we wish to touch that fish for a photograph, we should wet our hands ideally first of all, let them cool down a little bit, because our body temperature is about 20 degrees warmer than the cold blooded fish or trout, so it's always best to get our hands somewhat close to their temperature. So that fish is now upright, held in the current, to let it revive itself. It must be a photograph, or you want a photograph, which is all good. Hold it up for no more than a count of five or six, then place it back in the water gently. So support the fish under the belly, and maybe by the tail, um, and give it a lot of respect for the beautiful wild fish. Hold it back in the current and let the fish swim away. Now I'm going to land this rubber fish mid current, mid water, whatever depth it may be. So net's out, ready to go. I've landed that fish. I'll leave it in the bag so it's a bit of hands wet for argument's sake. Hold that between my legs, which I find quite satisfactory. I can grab that fish, cradle that fish very carefully, leave it in the water, unhook the uh, hook out of the fish, and let it go face it up into the current. And have a good day. Thank you. Landed our uh, fish, it's in the net again, ready for release. Yet the lure or fly is down, sort of a bit awkward to get to. Uh, maybe not to barb, etc. We can grab our forceps, put it over the hook, and just simply rotate the fly out. So the fish is still in the water, unharmed at all. Just rotate the fly out, and away you go. That's another method for looking after our wild resources. Okay, back to our test fish. Uh, you'll see why in a second. Okay, I've got one. I've oh, got him. Oh, he's only a small fish. Heck, he's only a small one. I'll get him in. I'll drag him over those rocks there. I'll get him up here. He's only a small one. Oh well. Not much. Hold him like that. Good. Get the hook out of him. Save that hook at all costs. Throw him back in the water. Well, that's what not to do.